This guy's methodical, exacting, and worst of all, patient. He's a nutbag. Because if the fucker's got a library card, doesn't make him a Yoda. Well, get on with it, man. Just don't stand there. You get the feeling that everything in America is completely fucked up. I've seen a part of myself no man should ever see. No, I don't feel all right. None of us feel all right. Patient saying of strays, you know, like because like I just all of all of my animals, um, well, they're all rescues. One I got from the pound, my cat, like she literally was just a stray. Me and me and my dog were walking, and she just came up meowing, and it's been around ever since. Like she never once has like gone to the bathroom outside of the litter box like she goes inside outside always comes back no training necessary like she's yeah. like I've definitely lucked out I just have some really good animals or like my aura just is very you know very much just, just like <laughs> come with me out right know. yeah uh, I was I'm, I'm the same way with strays except it's just uh uh, un- uh, emotionally unstable women yeah, yeah. that are to me. <laughs> so it's kind of I, the same. I get a little you know? bit of that. Uh, they, they, they oftentimes do like to pee outside of the litter box, though. <laughs> so <laughs> I get I get a lot of like like spectrum people. <laughs> like like yeah. definitely yeah, 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 yeah. like mm-hmm. I I draw that. But I mean like like I am you know like sensory processing disorder. So like it's used to be lumped in with Asperger's, mm-hmm. um, but it's just like I'm one foot on, one foot off, and so it's like I'm not really fully accepted in either one because mm-hmm. like spectrum people like like I can see you know like I can see them all that kind of stuff but then like there's just like that kind of there's some social things you know it's just like like I see where um, where they don't see where they're fucking up you know it's just like I I, I know enough like I can you know uh, or it might just be like I've just thrown myself at the wall enough time and seen like oh that doesn't work Mm -hmm. you know like I I don't know but um, that's a good place to start yeah right there Uh, welcome to another episode of Discoursers I don't know what episode this is I'm not doing the numbers anymore because the dates are all out of whack anyway Um, today we got Caleb C. Thomas a very proper name and which we just previously discussed means dog in Hebrew. <laughs> Patron saint of the strays. Uh, comedian in Tallahassee, friend to the blind. That is and true. those of, uh, uh, of, of difficulty seeing, I guess, yeah. in general. I'm a pretty great guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the name fits him. There we go. <laughs> All right, so basically, I got a few rules. Uh, they're just kind of loose rules, just to kind of uh, set the mood, I guess. They're not even rules, they're just modes, I guess. Uh, number one, keep it civil. Uh, let's both get out of here in one piece. Not gonna be a problem. Uh, number two, if one is offended, aggravated, whatever, they ask the other person to explain whatever they're talking about. We're both pretty good at that. Uh, only interrupt if the other person is exhausting an answer or going on and on, grandstanding, blah, blah. Or you just have a really great idea, <laughs> which is usually comes usually what happens. Uh, be yourself. That's who I want to meet. Oh, very, very heartwarming one. <laughs> um, and I, this is kind of my utopian one, but it's talk or listen. There are only two states to be in. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. Indeed. So the one thing we were talking about, we can start this out with the one thing we were talking about the other day. You wanted to travel in your, uh, in your well, it's not even a fucking RV. It's a, what do you call it? it uh, it's a box truck. Fortress. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, it's a, it's a box truck built on a van frame. So, like, 
at first I was calling it a van, but it just sounds real creepy. Like, come check out my van. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like, it's a box truck. I like, think it's the free candy on the side that makes yeah. it creepy. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, it's a box truck. It used to be a, it was owned by, I think it's Henderson, Kentucky, um, their police force. It was a criminal investigation u- unit. Uh, uh, their field or crime scene investigation unit. Like, mm-hmm. They brought it out to the field to, you know, bring up forensic evidence and, and stuff like that. And, um, but got a great deal on it, like super low miles, had like 14,000 miles on it. It's an 89. Um, the cool thing about that is like I've got the antique plates, like those like powder blue, you know. Like, mm. And so, and it, it saved me about, I was about to say $250. Yeah, like, insurance, insurance, registration, all of that's super cheap with an antique. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, it was really cool. Like it came with the generator, AC, all the cabinetries and stuff and so like I'm going through I've ripped some stuff out and I've got to like build a bed put in a sink and a shower and it's pretty much pretty much ready like I mean it's going to be a constant process of adding stuff so like I'll get kind of the bones in and then little ways down the line like I'll mount a water tank more to the middle (laughs) yeah there you go but, but yeah, like add like a water tank or you know waste tank like kind of stuff just mm-hmm. as I as I go as I can afford it. Right. And you wouldn't you wouldn't even need a large one. Yeah. You dump it out pretty frequently. Yeah. yeah. And uh, using that, you want to uh, go and spread the word of Caleb comedy <laughs> around the land. Yeah. I mean, really, I just I just want to like. I want to learn, you know, like networking is definitely like an aspect of it and like Mm -hmm. getting to know people. But like, I don't have a huge social media presence and like that's, that's intentional. Like I stay active so that the people that like me, people that care about me, like know I'm there and whatever little things. But I, I don't really put my comedy and stuff out there yet. Like Mm -hmm. I know I will, but like I want to, I want to, um, kind of have a bunch of arrows in my quiver before I shoot one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because it's like, it's like if you start shooting those arrows, like eventually you're going to hit the bullseye, you know? Right. Like, like, like if you go to a competition or whatever and you just start shooting, you know, like you might hit it, but if you hit it that one time, are you going to hit it again? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And, and so it's like, like, before I really start shooting at targets, like like I want to make sure that like I can hit that target every time, no matter where the target is, if it's moving, mm-hmm. whatever. Like I got the arrow for that, right? You know, and and so like my goal is to go to like different comedy hubs. You know, like I'll go to Orlando, Miami, Nashville, Chicago, and I want to spend like at least a month. You know, like if the town really sucks, like I'll, I'll get out you know if there's a bunch of dicks right yeah. but like the goal is to really go and try to learn from each scene because every scene is different everyone has different dynamics people have different comic styles you know that um kind of flourish in different scenes because mm-hmm. because they're kind of encouraged whatever and so right. you're influenced and, and encouraged yeah. by the people around you it's like it's like yeah. different little like comedic biomes mm-hmm. you know okay. and um And so, like, I want to go, you know, boost my immunity. (laughs) Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Expose myself to all of those differences and, like, Mm -hmm. hopefully take a little piece with me. You know, like, that's that's my goal. That's my kind of, like, um, like... I guess like woo woo hippie kind of goal is is like I don't want to leave a place like until like I've written a joke that like I could only write there. Okay. You know, it's just like 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 yeah. my experience being there, and it could be something about that place. It could be a style that like someone there uses that I'm just like, man, I've never fucking seen that. Mm-hmm. You know, like what is he doing? And so like sitting there and watching and dissecting it and being mm-hmm. like, okay, this is what he's doing. I'm gonna try that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, or, you know, it could just be 
an experience that happened in that period, completely separate from comedy, you know, but it happened in that time period. So it's related and synced in that location. Like basically like I want to have yeah. like some kind of, some joke that kind of anchors each location. Mm -hmm. You know, I've kind of done this. I've moved around a lot. I've kind of yeah. done the same thing. I uh, lived in the West coast, East coast, up, up on the East coast, New York, like just fucking all over the place, New Orleans, all that shit. And uh, it's, it wasn't a joke because I've only recently gotten into comedy, um, which is obvious by my comedy. But <laughs> I've only recently gotten into comedy. So it was mostly like some sort of lesson or whatever it is, which, you know, comedy is kind of the thing. Like if you're saying a joke, you've obviously processed that lesson, no. I guess, and be to be able to like put it out to a <laughs> crowd. Uh, well, sometimes, no. process, like, processed and embodied are two different I think, things. I think more it's like, like you are prepared to process it, you know, like, right. like, like if, if it really, and sometimes even if it doesn't hit, you know, cause like, like I know I have some that like, I was still actively processing it and that's why I wrote the joke. Like mm -hmm. that that the, my Nico bit, you know, familiar with the lizard that got killed in an AC? No. It's no, like this no, no, big, no. long, silly, it was the first joke I ever got like a compliment on. Like it's one of my right. favorites, but like, um, there's like long periods of silence. It's like a build up. Basically, it's, a, it's about a time, like in some real life event where like I accidentally murdered a lizard and it fucked me up because like, like I was, I'd seen it like, and it was on the outside of my AC unit and it was like near the vent and like, and I saw it and I turned it on and it just sucked up and it's just like fucking I could have shoot it off like I could have you know it's just like like I just wasn't thinking uh -huh. and it's just you know, yeah. and like and it Wizard just parts everywhere yeah and it yeah. just it just fucked with me so I was just thinking about it all day and then that night like on stage like I just like made up this ballad of Nico the Lizard <laughs> right. and and like yeah it's it's one of my closers just because like the end of it is just like real high energy like mm -hmm. I just yell his name like yeah, it's yeah. kind of like like an 80s movie like out in the rain yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the knees in the mud yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will remember you yeah. <laughs> Oh, there is a funny story linked to that, though. It's like, so I'm telling that story at a prison. Like, I, I did this prison show. There was a comic. Oh, shit. Nice. Have you met Old Head? There's yeah, a, yeah. There's a comic mm -hmm. here in town. I see Old Head. Kyle Old Head. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, he's, he's great. Like, I love him. Um, he hasn't in a while, but he used to put on these these shows just at, like, bizarre venues. And um, we did a homeless shelter. Uh, and we did. It wasn't really a prison. It was with prisoners. But it was, like, a... It was like a quarter way house you know it was like halfway right. to a halfway house if you like, fuck up there like yeah it was like a like a prison camp right you know and it really was structured like camp they had like dorms and bunk beds they all didn't happen to be like jewish or anything to no. Go. <laughs> no, like but it was um it was it was really neat they had like they could kind of come and, and go as they want like it was restricted and like there was barbed wire around the whole thing right but in that place it was just kind of like they were super observed but it was just like these guys like we think they're fine let's just put them in this place observe them and then if they do good for so long right. then we'll transfer them to a halfway house mm -hmm. um and so like we did one there and it was just like that was their weekly entertainment mm -hmm. and <laughs> we get up there and this lady uh she's like all right uh i guess we have some comics <laughs> some comedians they gonna try to be funny or something um so you guys pay attention i want you to clap and laugh if they funny feel free to boo them if if they ain't. I just look over at Ohead. I'm just like, fuck, fuck did you tell her to say that? And he's just like, I don't know, man. It's her. Um, and so I'm up there, and like the whole time there's this guy, he's got like face tats, and he's just mean mugging me. And um, I get to the Nico bit, and I'm just like, like, I killed him. I killed my best friend. <laughs> and it hurt. And this guy with the tat, like, like he was basically like, he was looking at me like, look at this silly motherfucker, this right. corny motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And he just like jumps up out of his seat. I'm like, oh, fuck. Right. You know, like, what that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's just like, I know how you feel. <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. That sounds like he might have actually <laughs> killed his best friend. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I was like, I'm talking about a lizard, man. Like, like there's no metaphor. It's actually a lizard. It had a frill. <laughs> right, right. 
I killed a lizard once too. <laughs> he was wearing my best friend's skin. <laughs> Indeed. Must have been listening to a lot of Alex Jones at that time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can tell by their pupils. I've actually only heard uh, <coughs> Old Head do one set. Uh, before, because I, I guess he has he's very, much very, comedy. He's very high yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he just—he might just do it other places. Mm -hmm. like, he always kind of, kind of did outside of birds and that mm -hmm. whole group. But but yeah, no, very very high energy. I remember like I went after him last time. He had like the whole crowd just go up, and it's just like it's hard to, hard to follow that with like it's impossible to follow it without addressing it. Right, you know? uh -huh. and like I remember because it's like one of the first times like like I learned that lesson, you know, or I did it like or I, like I pulled it off, right? Uh, because like I just kind of came up and I was just like. I'm gonna be a way different energy than that. <laughs> right. And I just said it. And I just said it just real deadpan and slow. And and it just like it killed like it opened that door. Right. And it's just like, you know, and this is just it just takes kind of acknowledging where the room, the situation is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. I just started acknowledging weird misconceptions that people might have about me if I when yeah. I get on stage and that's helped me out yeah a lot no it definitely so like, much like giving context for things you know is like I can talk about a lot more darker stuff and like um, weirder stuff like I don't know um, now because like I do a better job at like setting up up front like hey you know like yeah I got this dark side whatever but there's also like ultimately I want to be this like I'm this this puppy dog but like sometimes I get poked wrong in a bite you know? right or like, like it says on your Facebook profile a Labrador that sometimes slips into the depression yeah Is that it? frequent <laughs> bouts of frequent depression, bouts of depression. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, uh, I think it was comedian Matt Bailey that like said I was like a golden retriever or a lab or I get it a lot because I mean, like, like I do, like I'm very high energy, you know, but like I also can get backed into a corner and start barking. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and it's mostly just all bark. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's like a bit I've been a you know house dog for a while, but I was on the streets a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Not the actual streets. Kind of speaking. <laughs> with, with that, yeah. With the, I was. I was homeless for like three years. I was yeah, straight up. Like, I know that. Like I was. When Where I was, at? I was before I was eighteen too, yeah. and right around the time wow. I was eighteen. Like all around. Like I hitchhiked and trained yeah. often and shit. And like, yeah, it was wild. Um, the rails. Yeah. So kind of speaking of like the Nico thing and the. Um, and the, the the Labrador thing, like you're a person like that's not like you run the 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 spectrum of emotion without swinging wildly. Like you just sort of embrace it. You don't swing wildly. You just sort of embrace it and just sort of smooth into yeah. it. You know what I mean? That's, like I've met people. No, I've met people that do it wildly. Yeah. Like it's there's a totally different. That's a totally different thing than what you do. Like you'll just sort of like bring it up and bring it down. Oh yeah. And like bring it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then like mm, yeah. smooth. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I've gotten better at like recognizing, it, and it's like it's something that you do for people. You know, and I think mm -hmm. that's a little bit of that like spectrum. But it's like realizing right. that like a lot of things like it's like yeah they're they're inefficient. They're not. They don't seem necessary. But it's just like like in a way like they are they're beneficial it's like it's like um in your in your car like it'll run for a little while without any oil or mm -hmm. lubricants or anything like that but mm -hmm. it's just like those those lubricants like like they're not a part of the machine it doesn't cause the the engine to run right you know but they allow it to run right you know and yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like like that is like you know, something like that has 
taken me a while to learn those things. And a lot of them, you know, is like I have specific memories tied to points where like it really fu- fucking failed me. It, I really fucked up because I didn't consider this, you know, this area. It's just like, oh shit, that needs to be greased. And it was not. And it right, fu- yeah, yeah. I fucking threw a rod now, you know. Right. Like, now yeah, this whole yeah, fucking yeah. thing has to be replaced. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like relationship <laughs> metaphor, you know. Like, it's yeah. just like, cause it's just like, like, like I've, you know, like, like I've been like on the outside looking in, and you're, you know, like super shitty, you know, like, like, but it's like each of those things like are, are moments that have like forever changed how I like not just relationships but all interactions because like I'm constantly like over analyzing everything and I mm-hmm. see I see kind of everything like the fractal nature of everything and how like everything relates to everything else or right. you know at least like kind of reflects upon everything else and it's just like um, and it's too much to fully comprehend and understand but mm-hmm. I, like I think like kind of understanding the broad strokes of it Kind of right can help I don't know I talked yeah. myself out of, off my own train of thought right <laughs> right well I mean it's a lot of like cause and effect like if you're looking at the cause and effect of what's going on that's like the more I guess uh, scientific look at it I guess um, is that if you've got this system of different things say it's different people within the same environment this thing is going to cause that to do this that's going to cause it to do this no. and if you're not able to express the proper emotion because you haven't really practiced that emotion. Like sometimes, sometimes, you know, pity is good and sometimes happy is good and sometimes sad is good and sometimes imp- like straight, just straight like empathy. Like I don't understand, but I'm listening and I'm trying. You know, like we, each thing is different for each scenario. And if you haven't practiced any of those, and like you said, you're not putting the lubricants and the oil and that shit to practice it, you're gonna go to do it and it's gonna come out completely fucking wrong. <laughs> and when somebody's in a bad place and you comes out completely wrong, yeah, it you, fucks them all up. I yelled at a, uh, a woman and her young child at Lake Ella once. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I was on like I don't know if it was like a date or if it was, it was like a uh, old friend and like it probably like could have been right but it for sure wasn't once I yelled about a little kid <laughs> right um, like and the thing is is like like I very much kick him I was gonna get laid you little bastard and kick him no, like I very much have like a strong sense of like justice like that's that spectrum right. thing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah like the more I learn about cause like I wasn't really diagnosed until I was like 27 mm-hmm. so like I really don't know a whole lot about it like it's put things into context but like I haven't really deep dove into right. it um, but like but yeah that sense of justice from what I understand is like kind of part it's just like no you those are the rules yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like um i very much always kind of had that yeah. um and that that's really serious for people who are like serious on the autism spectrum yeah like this is very much the rule you follow the fucking rule like no matter what well side note remind me about the yelling at the girl <laughs> like ella okay, but yeah, like yeah. um it was actually uh going to florida state and uh pursuing an English degree that like kind of changed that because like I had this one one teacher that like he was he was yeah, great. Smoke. What's that? No, I smoke. Yeah. I okay. Know. Um, I had this one teacher that like um, uh, he at Same one point cup. I should have gotten two different cups for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna end badly. I know it. Anyway, sorry. He at one point like um, you know just kind of stressed the point. And I think it's something that like a lot of. English professors or professors from any discipline will, will stress, you know, mm-hmm. but it really hit home. You know, when he said it, it was just like, you know, like a big part of what we're doing here is we're learning the rules so that we can creatively break them. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. is is just because like that's where true like kind of innovation and mm-hmm. true like like kind of novelty and things that really stick out and resonate with people are you know are those broken rules you know like Carlin's seven rules you can't you know it's like right. he was breaking the rules you know but he did it creatively he did it because he knew the rules he knew exactly the lines he was coloring in seven words you can't say on television yeah Yeah. you know like like he knew he knew the fcc regulations he'd been to jail for doing that bit multiple times um (laughs) like and and so uh but because he knew the rules so well, he was able to craft it eventually into a thing that mm-hmm. changed the way, like, like media, like people are able to 
speak. You know, it, right. it changed the like, the definition of free speech mm-hmm. um, into actual free speech. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> but but yeah, and so like like learning that the like in, in English like we're learning these things because I'm I'm very much into like trans that that's the other that fractal thing is like transferable skills and it's just like because. Everything is kind of related to everything in some little way, not in the same way to everything. And that's why you kind of got to be on your toes. But there's little aspects of every everything and everyone in mm-hmm. in everything. You just got to train your eye to, to see it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you Absolutely. can get real cross-eyed trying to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's the only reason I started comedy yeah. is because I wanted to be better at podcasting. I want to yeah. be better at speaking. Yeah. And now I'm addicted I, to it. I did but, it to be a better writer, yeah. yeah and Cause, writer, yeah. Because everything mm-hmm. I, I wrote was, like, really dour and, like, you know, it was just, like, I want to make a difference. I want to change your thoughts and minds you know mm-hmm. the only people that would like Same. the only people that would like stick through to the ends were the ones that were already on board right you yeah know? exactly yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. and so like that's what like got me thinking it was like comedy is, is just like finding a way to get people on board that want it be on board mm-hmm. you know that don't want to be on board I want that's that's what I want to do right and so that's why like I have a lot of jokes about like you know and it's very subtle very very, you know, whatever, just like silly guy. Like it's very subtly chipping away at toxic masculinity. You know, like 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 I'm not attacking it head on, being like, hey, look, you're fucking dumb. Right. You know, it's just illustration, little illustration. Me being okay with this part of me, mm-hmm. but I'm also this thing. You know, it's right. just like 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 I can be someone that listens to Disney songs, and I could also, you know, like be like like a secret rage monster. Yeah. What are you a queer? You know, what are you? It's, just like, it's just like like I've got both of them. Like I can, right. I could, I have you know both you know like mud boots and like skinny jeans. Right. You know, what's you know, that? like like yeah. I'm, I'm a what, what's your dude. what's your so the skin oh that works out well because the skinny jeans go inside the mud boots. Very yeah, well, see? so yeah, it works really well. Yeah, you don't step on your uh, yeah. What, what's your, your, uh, your your pants? What what's your what would you say is your kind of loose definition of toxic? masculinity uh i mean it's definitely not whatever buzzword right you know it's just like like yeah like um like i don't i think it's just just the the dichotomies where it's just like you got to be this or this it's just like you're alpha or you're beta like i have a joke it still hasn't really hit you know hard like it still need needs work but it's just like you know alpha beta i want to be an omega because i just want to put an end to it you know and so it's like it needs a it needs a punch but the premise is that it's like omega is the last letter and it's just like that dynamic just needs to be ended you right know? it's just like we need to, maybe it's like we need to graduate to just where everyone are omega men some ladies are even omega i don't know right. yeah, 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 yeah. that was i don't know that probably won't go right but, well, I, I like to think of it as, and I kind of like, I, I read Jordan Peterson's book and like listen to him a little yeah. bit. I don't agree with everything he says, yeah. especially because he's more of a traditionalist. Mm. Uh, not totally like as in like very conservative, because but he is a little bit more traditionalist. Yeah. I like to think of it as more like you have this hierarchy based on competency. Mm. It's like whoever is the best at doing something, they do it. No. And you refer to them when you're low, don't have as much competency, you refer to them for like the final answer in something. And that's literally all hierarchies are for. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's not some sort of like, can you go out and was well, there like some YouTube channel called The Art of Charm or whatever the fuck it is where you go out and like woo yeah. ladies with oh, like, yeah, by, yeah. by basically using there's, psychological there's tricks a and shit. Of those. Yeah, like all that shit is so stupid. There's, I've watched it simply to watch how they use the psychology. Yeah. There's one, um, like if you want like the psychology stuff without like all that bullshit, there's mm. one that like I've, I've watched um, and it's been a while since I've watched them, but like what it was really is like once I first got diagnosed and like I started noticing and realizing like 
how little I noticed and realized like social cues and stuff. Um, I started watching. It's, it's called Charisma on Command. I've seen that one. He yeah, like he doesn't yeah, really yeah. talk about like dating shit. Like, mm-hmm. and he does. And what really actually caught my eye to it is like he does these like analyses and breakdowns of mm-hmm. comics. Yeah. Like evidently he's like a comedy fan. Yeah. And, and the body language. Exactly. And, yeah. and he and he and he like kind of analyzes it and like gives his interpretation of like what this is saying and how you can you know adopt this into you know you know your being or like what this is doing for people you know like one that really um stuck with me and like and i've definitely used before because um definitely like growing up i was someone and i still can be but i was someone that would get like talked over a lot like i'd start to speak Mm -hmm. and it's just like i started to tell the story and i'd just be plowing through and just you know i get talked over Mm -hmm. um but there is like a breakdown of is is kevin hart like while he was doing i hate it up but no i'm just kidding (laughs) go ahead ahead. it was like kevin hart while he was doing uh like interviews and stuff like that and like they would just talk about how like he would start saying and if something would interrupt like he wouldn't he wasn't whatever he would ride the wave of it and then bring it back and he'd kept, keep resetting it find find ways to, to reset it and to make sure that everyone was there and he didn't actually start the story until he knew everyone was on him I saw that one you know? yeah 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 like yeah, and so like so that's definitely changed like social interactions for me you know mm-hmm. like not that I'm like I want to demand this thing it's just, it's just like right. if people aren't on board if they're not whatever like like, like if they're not clearly on board, mm. either get them on board, you know, or like a, ride that wave and wait till it crests. Until so you can bring it back exactly. around. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of problems. I have this theory, right? It's on the use of the word um and like. Those oh, two I use words. Them all the time. Right. I know. We all do. And I, even I, who like pride myself on using them, like I guess less than other people, I still use them. Yeah. Irish whiskey. It's great. Too big, too big a, too big a set. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was the fact that everyone is so overloaded with information that they want to share it now. So we're all trying to very quickly get, get something out. And then. Like, like I'm telling you a story, right? And I go, so I went to the store and there was the person I was previously talking about in the story. And I leave a pause, just for effect. You know what I mean? Just a little pause. It's like a second and a half, two seconds. It goes, and then another person jumps in and immediately jumps into it and goes, oh wait, I got this other story. And then they immediately start telling their story and everyone starts paying attention to them because ADD, you know, ADHD, whatever the fuck you want to call it, I'm 40, so I'm still ADD. But it's, so people use um and like to fill that space. Mm, So no one can. Yeah, so your dramatic pause is um or like. uh, No, 100%, like like that's for sure what it is for me. And when I realized that like, when I'm on stage, it people want to listen to, or at least if I've done the right like setting, people want to listen to it, and so it's like I don't need that that like is like get out of get it out of the way, mm-hmm. so that now if you have their attention, now you're giving them the space to think it over and to really hear what you're saying. It's like I have jokes that like I do do now that like I wrote. Three months in, you know, I did them for seven, eight months, you know, and they just never got anything. And I was just like, well, I thought these were funny. It's like, I still, it's like, I know this is funny, but um, I can't convince anyone else. But it's just like, then I revisited them once I kind of like learned that lesson of like slow down. Like, people want to have time to breathe right you know they don't yeah, yeah they don't like like it's only in your head that like if you're the only one that feels like all that space needs to be filled mm-hmm. you know those spaces feel like fucking eternity though like mm-hmm. three or four seconds where you maybe either wait to give it breathing room no. or you fuck up just a little bit no one else notices right. but you feel like in your brain you fucked up your perfect joke yeah. and it takes you like a second and a half to two three seconds to recuperate mm-hmm. no one notices that yeah 
No one notices. Especially it. if you write it right, because it's very much like it's musical, it's timing and stuff. Because there's there's been times where it's just like like I, I like stick for a second and then like I remember it, but it's just like if I said it right now, it's gonna be awkward and they're gonna see. It's mm-hmm. gonna look like I forgot it for a second. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so instead, I'm just gonna write it another couple beats until that like that measure comes back around. I don't know my musical term or not, but no, know, I see. Yeah, until it, until it, like that that repeats that part of the song repeats right then i'll hit right <laughs> hit it, right know? on that first beat on that first yeah. four on the floor to yeah. bow right there yeah yeah absolutely yeah indeed yeah all right, let's jump ship on that. Okay. Uh, let, well, actually, let's see how you're going to tie it back into yelling at a kid. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like yelling <laughs> at kids. Um, mostly the goat kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, no, so me and a friend were at Lake Ella, and we're just kind of talking, catching up. It had been, like, two or three years since we'd hung out. Mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, I keep hearing this like fuck, 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 and like I look because like part of like the sensory perception disorder is like like I can I just it's why like I drink and you know like inebriate myself a lot is just because it's kind of deadening all this stuff because it's just like being in public is just like I'm hearing all the conversations and trying to process them all mm. and like and I'm getting a bunch of them but then I'm you know failing at some and it's just like um, and so it's just I hear this and so I was like alright I gotta figure out what it is and I just see this little girl with this giant stick just like chasing these ducks around just flap flap and she's like like not every time but she's connecting with the ducks like several times and like I look around and like like I see like her mom and she's kind of just like off talking to a friend like the trail Mm -hmm. and um I just kind of like approached I didn't get too close you know like like I kept like a good distance I was like hey sweetheart hey hey sweetie don't please don't hit the ducks Mm -hmm. you know and then the mom comes like running up is like what you doing near my daughter I'm 50 feet away yeah yeah. you know like what you doing talking to my daughter I was like I was like ma'am she was hitting the ducks and I was just telling her not to hit the ducks she's like she wasn't hitting no ducks I was like ma'am you don't know you were talking to the thing like she was definitely hitting these ducks and now she's like calling me a liar and then the justice thing comes back and she's like there's justice for the ducks and there's also like no bitch like I fucking saw her hitting those ducks like don't hit the fucking ducks and so like like yeah. and so i basically went on that rant you know like like but like uh and so i started i was just like i was just like she doesn't need to be hitting the ducks and and she was like you don't need to be yelling and i was like i'm not yelling i'll show you yelling and I, t- <laughs> I, 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 I turned my back to her so it was like like i was not yelling at her right you right. know like so like i still was in my head right even though i was acting fucking insane yeah um like i still was thinking about like other people and um uh but yeah so like i turned my back to her and uh i was just like i was just like this is an announcement to the entirety of like ella like please 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 don't hit the ducks and i just like yelled this at the top of my lungs and um like the whole time like i'm sitting there like like uh when I got up to intervene with it, there's like this couple that's sitting a little bit away, like mm-hmm. on a bench, and they see me, they see me intervene. I get, I see like the approval on their face. And right. so I was just like, okay, I know I'm doing the right, right. thing. Like she doesn't need to be hitting this fucking duck. Mm-hmm. Um, of course they don't say anything, but. I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, but like I'm definitely, like I was taught right. to like take action. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, and then like as I'm kind of like getting on to the lady like telling her like yes yeah, she was in the, like they're they're like vi- like their faces are like on my side like I can see that right um, but then I turn around and did the yelling I, I turn back around and they have gotten up from the bench and are walking <laughs> away I was just like oh no I might have fucked up Uh-oh. like I might have gone a little too crazy, yeah, crazy. Yeah. and uh, yeah like me and her having hung out since. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. Not necessarily from the fact that you were wrong, because you were definitely in the right. Like, yeah. absolutely. I've done weird shit like that. I'm real good at making point. a right a wrong. Right. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, 
okay, let's let, let's jump ship a little bit here. Okay. Um, let's go with. Um, uh, you grew up. Uh, you grew up like me, actually, in a Baptist household. My dad was my dad was a Baptist minister for a while. Uh, dropped out of it because he was an alcoholic for a while, and then got back into it when he wasn't an alcoholic. Then dropped out when he wasn't an alcoholic. Then got back into it when he wasn't an alcoholic. And you know, rinse, repeat, right. back and forth. Yeah. Um, and then you also went down to Haiti. I did. Uh, for not necessarily ministry work, but just kind of help out and volunteer. Yeah, I mean, like for me, like I. I always have a hard time like because like it was like for me it was like a mission missionary calling but for me like it's 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 another one of those things like like the definition you know it's just like toxic masculinity like what I define it might not be like that buzzword you're thinking Mm -hmm. you know it's like missionary for sure I know it isn't what what immediately goes in a lot of people is like colonizers like tracts and bibles and stuff like Mm -hmm. that but like if you've read that bible like Jesus is constantly saying like hey go take care of people you know it's just like hey you know that orphan you know that widow you know that person with out any clothes you probably do something about that mm-hmm. you know and and it's like that's what missions is is it's just like it's taking it's taking like it's like oh i have this peace i have this you know connection with god and that compels me to help others, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, in the conversion stuff, like, I, my opinion has always been like, I'll leave that to God. It's like, he's better at it. Right. You know, it's just like, if someone wants to convert, you know, like, if, if you believe that God's all powerful, that God has a plan and, or like, you know, he is going to bring that person because like, it doesn't take another person, you know, like, like, like it, it can be something you do all by yourself in your closet, you know, right. like, um, uh, and so like, uh, I don't know if I, I your whiskey got my train. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, you were put pennies all over my train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> or my track, the tracks of my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all got flattened. <laughs> no, you were talking about how uh, missionary work is not necessarily about no, conversion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about actually going out and showing people goodwill and doing good things for them. Yeah, and I was constantly, because, like, like, I lived... Um, uh, I was there for about seven, eight months. Um, mm. Six of it, I, about five, six of it, I lived with a Haitian family, like in their backyard. The first month, I lived with like uh, a Haitian pastor and his family. Mm. Um, they kicked me out because the wife didn't like my long hair. Um, um, they, she, like it was like a very like um, fundamentalist Baptist family, and so. Right. Even though, like, I went through, like, scripture by scripture and, like, showed them and, like, did, like, a Bible study and showed them, why, like, uh, how they, you know, I was like, this is how you're interpreting, but actually, if you look at it in the context of all this stuff, mm-hmm. is this good to drink? Yeah, that's you. Yeah, 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 awesome. yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you. I'm getting, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No pop worries. in. Uh, I mean, did, well, doesn't it say in the Old Testament? I know, it, yeah, it says in the Old Testament that you're actually not supposed to cut your hair. Yeah, no, and then it like switches. But the thing is, is like, what, where like those those type of fundamentalists, um, the, what they're interpreting is a verse in one of the Corinthians. It's First or Second Corinthians, I mm-hmm. believe. I mean, it's one of the letters to one of the churches that Paul wrote. I'm pretty sure it's one of the Corinthians. All right. Um, but like, there's like one verse where he's like, he's like, long hair is the shame of a man. Mm. Um, and the thing is, is and this it's could probably all... because he was bald. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, it, this... He changed the whole shit yeah, up. Yeah, he's he was just bald. like, he's like, fuck those <laughs> beautiful haired bastards. <laughs> and they're long, silky he's like, hair. He's like, you know what? They're actually the devil. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, no, so like, um, evidently, like, and this could all be totally fucking wrong, mm-hmm. um, but like, I heard a pastor talk on it at one point, but it's like, evidently, um, at that point in time, um, 
in that particular church, there was like an issue where there were like prostitutes and like 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 uh, lady boy prostitutes and uh, stuff yeah, that yeah. were like infiltrating the church. Like they were not members of the church. They were not part of the community. They were just looking for clientele. Exactly. Wow. They saw a gathering of people, you know, and they're just like, oh, let's get her fuck on and, and to be know? fair there are some pretty like there sometimes there are some pretty, pretty repressed people that exactly go into that yeah exactly and and so when he's saying that like mm. he's not just saying you know like hey get the fucking hose out <laughs> you know like <laughs> right, right. You, know, you know but he like what he's saying is is like because a marker of those was like the long hairs right. from, from what I understand mm-hmm. and so when he's saying like long hair is the shame of a man he's condemning the practices not the hair you right. know the hair was just like like a signifier of the practices. Right. Okay. Uh, that was that was like the understanding that mm. like like I I was under. I mean, it's been a while since I've really researched it. Like I need right. I need to do another deep dive back into the Bible, kind of refresh a bunch of <laughs> the the stuff because it was it was something that was just all day all day every day. You mm-hmm. know, like I'd go to sleep listening to sermons. Right. You know, like yeah. that's how I went to sleep every night was edifying yeah, my dad was a terrible minister <laughs> terrible if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this dad like it's you you were terrible like just southern baptist just yeah. straight southern baptist uh he a lot of uh a lot of angry hellfire a lot of which is which is kind of typical for baptist yeah. but he was he was very much he had a kind of sense of, and he even he admits this now, of guilt within himself. Mm-hmm. So he kind of put that off on everyone else. That's usually how it goes. You know? Yeah, he projected that, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he's old now, and he's, he's he's seen the error of his ways, and his God is his own private God now, you know? His own private practice, I should right. say. Yeah. So that's kind of cool that he's kind of come around to that. Yeah. No, we used to have huge spats, man, because I was, I was anti-theist yeah. for a while, and we did not get along <laughs> very well. That, that did not work. Ooh. I like that he said that and not atheist, because like that is like definitely like most atheists are actually just anti-theists. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. If you're atheist, you just don't care. Yeah. You're just like, exactly. somebody's, somebody's like, whatever, I don't care what you believe. Yeah, get a fuck exactly. away from me. Like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, and when it becomes like it's like anti proselytizing, it's mm-hmm. just like you know, like there's someone like I won't name, but you know, there's someone like in the comedy scene where it's just like every other post is is just like this is why God is a big dum dum, you know, <laughs> and anyone anyone that like even could possibly say the word God and not you know smirk in a shitty way, they're a dum dum too, <laughs> right? Know? Like. It's yeah, just yeah. so much, and it's just like, what, what, who, who's that for? Yeah, you know, like, like, who are you, who are you changing? Right, you know, like nobody, because like, the people that don't like it unfollowed still remain yeah. friends or unfriended. Yeah, and the people that see it are people that agree with it. Yeah, That's it's it. just like it's just you're jerking off. Yeah, you're, you're jerking off in public. Like, yeah, fucking. Yeah. If you're I gonna mean, be Louis C.K., write some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That used to be me, though. I, w- I was posting all kind of stuff. This is evidence that God doesn't exist. And then after a while, I was like, okay, I know that what people, to me personally, in my own belief, I I don't think that what most Christians believe is God is real. Mm-hmm. To me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But to other people, like, some people need that shit, man. Some people need that shit. Like, I already have a pretty good set of rules to live my life because of my experience through life and yeah. the empathy that I've gotten from being down and out and homeless and, and fucking damn near, like damn near alcoholic and getting hooked on certain drugs and like all this other stuff. And luckily I learned my lesson without having to go to any sort of system yeah. or whatever. But I did have the foundation of, the, of, <coughs> of Christianity behind me mm-hmm. to help me. I didn't use it as in like a, I have to pray for this. Mm-hmm. I use it as in, Here's a lesson in this parable that says this that's no different from Grimm's fairy tales or Aesop's fables. You know what I mean? It's, it's no different. It's something to learn from. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's exactly the way I view it. Like, yeah. 
like if, if some this, of learn from that just has like it has like a a pretty varied history. It has like a really rich, long, yeah. long history, and so it's just like like if you're gonna, you know, and like it has a bunch of applications. You know, it's just like there really is like, like I joke about like the Song of Solomon, and it's just like a tit joke. But it's just like like that that book like it really is like it's a ro- an erotic le- letter it's a, it's a love letter it's like a sex poem um, and it's in the bible and it's like why is it in the bible like it's in the bible because like it's one of those fractal things it's just, just mm-hmm. like it's just like this relationship the the back and forth the poetry of this you know like like the lewdness and the you know like like the kind of like simplicity like it's all part of this thing you know and it's and it's in there like like and so it's just like there's that and then there's also like you know like kill all the nephilim right <laughs> well the ne- hold on give me one second i'm trying to remember left nephilim are half angel half demon uh no or uh, uh, half angel, angel half slash angel demon thing? half human okay yeah because like, yeah. like angel yeah, and yeah, demons yeah, 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 are yeah. basically mm-hmm. same thing it's just who they aligned with right you know it's right. like so just a powerful being mixed with a human and you know, whichever side they aligned yeah. with. yeah okay yeah yeah but yeah it was it was um because it was like forbidden and then you can get into like the ancient alien stuff of like the Anunnaki and you know and it's like right um, the Nephilim are the product of the Anunnaki in human and it's just like like um, I think they're all all kind of um, in a way painting the same like the blind people there's that the analogy of like uh, us like ex- trying to explain religion and trying to explain the world is kind of like three blind people like that's never seen an elephant trying to describe it from their t- touch right you know, yeah yeah, yeah I know each that one. person yeah. has a different side of it mm-hmm, the you trunk know? And the, yeah and yeah. they're all describing it it's just like no this is what it is it is this thing right you know and it's and it's kind of kind of that is it's just like like I want to try to get the best picture you know like I'm gonna rub my hands all around it mm-hmm. you know like um, and it's just a lot of people content themselves it's just like no what I can reach is what there is right that's it that's all yeah, yeah. you know but it takes walking around it takes mm-hmm. you know like exploring it takes time like like when I'm on calls like navigating blind people because like uh, for those that have, like I take calls where they can uh, connect to my phone my computer connects to their phone and I can see what they oh uses the phone yeah oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. or yeah. if they have smart glasses I can see through those that's what I thought you used yeah, yeah okay yeah. most people it's a phone though and gotcha. so like like I'll navigate I'll say like move three inches to the right and uh, they'll be like hey take a picture of this um, notepad and let me and tell me mm-hmm. what it says um, and like like most like it's pretty easy or whatever but there's some people blind from birth they don't have a whole lot of like uh, orientation and mobility training um, you know and that's another way you realize like access to education and stuff like it completely changes people's lives like you're born at the same level and it's like some people are trained from an early age they're trained you know the they're given the concepts and they're worked with to get you know um, and then others just not they have no concept how sight works they know have no right. no concept of like um, space you know they're mm-hmm. like there's there's something that's just like their, their place in space like they just don't have a concept of it right. um, I would imagine that makes say like studying like math when it's like the XYZ yeah. axis and you can look around you and see XYZ axis yeah. but if you're blind like XYZ axis is fucking mind Mind blowing. They actually have these like really neat um, and just kind of through working with them, like I see different like kind of products and I'm mm-hmm. exposed to different little things. But uh, for like education and stuff, they have these really neat little. They're like tac- there's a bunch of tactile stuff for math. 
Hmm. Um, and so it's like, like similar to Braille. Yeah, yeah. But like, like for um, for like multiplication tables and stuff like that, there'll be like um, I saw there's there's this one where there's like these little kind of discs, like these little square discs, and each one is one. And so then there's a one that's a rectangular like little tray and that that will hold 10 of those and uh-huh. so each one of those will hold 10 and so then you get so many of those and those link into another one and then those link into another one, and they just kind of will keep adding and building right and so it's like a tactile way of expressing these numbers and showing you know the, like the the relation to them and, right um, and then they'll have like graphs where um, it's kind of like almost kind of like a pegboard you know got these kind of like raised up um, and then they'll set different kind of like cubes or you know things on it so that you can actually kind of feel it uh, they'll feel the way like the graph or mm. whatever goes like it's pretty neat like there's a lot of really neat assistive yeah. technology that we've like, come a long way from just leaving people in the woods yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what we used to do yeah just like and it's awesome yeah that we've done that because yeah, it's amazing because you, you never know People who don't see life as I don't I don't want to use the word normal, but as like I guess able body like mm. like more than able body yeah, person just typical just yeah. kind of a t- typical, a typical person sees it they see it differently and they can give you a different view on something mm-hmm. like I can guarantee you that that the person that has to deal with those little putting those little discs on top of things mm-hmm. has an entirely different philosophy on what science is just in general oh yeah and that's that's valuable and absolutely valuable and there are blind scientists like there's this one one chick that calls in um i've only had her once but i've seen her name come up but like she works at the cdc in washington um oh, crazy and she's some kind of pathologist uh like she works on blind person working with ebola like, fucking yeah <laughs> legitimately like it's like dope. like yeah. like working with like super serious like like diseases and illnesses right and stuff like she calls in one day and she's like hey um i need you to help me check on my brains <laughs> i was just like okay <laughs> and, and she's like she's like yeah i have some um uh sub-zero freezers like they went down to like like negative 700 like they went like they, they were crazy cold. Yeah. um uh and she's like i just need to check and make sure that they're all um in the right temperature range because mm-hmm. because these specimens like i literally can't replace them right. <laughs> like 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 the diseases are rare and also they're human brains <laughs> Do you realize how hard it is for a blind person to kill a person? <laughs> but but yeah, and so it's just like there's yeah there's blind people in every every type of job you can imagine. People working for congressmen, you know, oh. like, congresswomen actually. Oh okay. Like, I won't say the name just for mm-hmm. whatever, but yeah, keep names to a minimum. Like I've had to bleep out a couple of things on this podcast for. Uh, Incrimination purposes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'd like to talk more about like like on stage and stuff. Talk about working, you know, with with blind people and just because just there's so much crazy shit that happens. But it's something like I because like I love the job. Like it's mm-hmm. like the first thing where it's just like oh I really want to invest in it. Like this is something like I believe in. Right. Um, yeah. And. Uh, and so it's like even though you're helping Skynet <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that's its own thing <laughs> um but uh but yeah like I just um I don't know I really oh I interrupted with a joke Skynet. and I fucked your whole shit up <laughs> I broke my own rule that's my that's, I broke my own rule you, you're good I, <laughs> you you said unless people are ranting and I can be pretty ranty no no I said grandstanding <laughs> ranting is different I allow ranting ranting is totally okay grandstanding is different like the only person I've had grandstand has been Roman which Roman is a grandstander that's what he does that's that's his whole MO so stands grandly yeah yeah <clears throat> Hmm. All right, yeah. So let's go ahead and wrap it up here. All right, we're about about an hour. Right on. So uh, yeah, this has been Caleb C. Thomas. Uh, you got some social media? You want to fucking? Um, I'm Caleb C. Thomas on everything. 
Like I just straight like no underscores or anything, no spaces, just Caleb C. Thomas. Caleb C. Thomas. Everything. Wow. Damn. It's pretty simplistic. One of the reasons for the C. Ah, like yeah, yeah. genuinely, like um, it was because I could get the screen name on everything. Um, and then also there is a Caleb Thomas in the guild. Like, like the Actors and Writers Guild. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so if I were to, you know, get to that point, mm -hmm. I would have to change your ad anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, one, I got the, the screen names. Two, if I keep progressing, I'm going to have to anyway. So I right. might as well already have that in people's name you know, or in people's mind, mm -hmm. you know? Cause like, like when I first started, like first two years, people were like, okay, let's see, don't like, no one said the fucking C. And, uh, and like my whole joke was, is like, like the C is so, um, is so all of y'all will do what my parents couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice, nice. But, but yeah, like, and so, um, uh, yeah, that's why I went with, with that. Yeah, was, okay. And also, like, Caleb Thomas, like, like, it's it's less sticky in your mind. It's like Caleb C. Thomas. Like, right. it's, it's like, it's a little bit, it's like a push pin in the it's, center. It's got a little bit of rhythm to it, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, I would get you to promote some shows, but uh, this isn't going to be until like Monday, maybe like the Monday, two weeks from now. I don't know. Who fuck knows? I'll be around. Yeah, you'll be around at Birds in Tallahassee, yeah. maybe some Pan Panama City Beach stuff. Yeah, I'm in Panama City tomorrow. Actually. Yeah, some Panama City, Panama City Beach stuff. And uh, look for him coming in his C CSI van to your town soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this has been an episode of Discoursers. And uh, now that there's video, not only can I say the buzzwords, but I can say go fuck yourself with a finger. See you next time. <laughs> That's it.